with the future of Phantom. What's happening in Phantom and what is what what does the future hold? So I would like to welcome our panelists up to the stage. Future of Phantom, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Quantum Miami. Most importantly, welcome to the Future of Phantom panel. My name's Austin Ramp, and it's my pleasure to introduce you guys to three of probably my most favorite people in the entire industry. We'll start to my left here, Simone Pomposi, who's a CMO, Michael Kong, CEO, and Juan Angel, the head of marketing of the Phantom Foundation. Uh, welcome, guys. Glad that you're here. So I want to pick at you just a little bit on this base layer security thing. So you had mentioned that other chains are perhaps um, they're sacrificing security for performance. And I know that you guys have taken the approach to uh, building out something called the Phantom Virtual Machine, which you know, is kind of a buzzword that a lot of people throw around. But with the, the consensus that Phantom has, and it runs on a, a directed acyclic graph, uh, it can process a lot more transactions than the EVM can actually handle by itself, right? So the EVM has been a bit of a bottleneck. And so whereas other chains have maybe you know, created uh, subnets or or other horizontal scaling solutions, you guys are really focusing on just making the base chain the pinnacle of what it could be. Could you expand upon that just a little bit? Yeah, as I mentioned before, the, the reason why we're focusing on the base chain ch uh, security and we want to take the performance optimization to a, a, as much as possible is because we don't want to compromise on security to gain performance because for us, that's not really acceptable. So. A lot of the te technical work has been on improving the underlying core consensus. And fundamentally, like what makes, say, Phantom much more scalable than, say, Bitcoin and Ethereum out there <laughs> is the fact that you can process transactions asynchronously. And what that means is that you can process multiple transactions or multiple blocks that contain transactions simultaneously in the network. So say you take, for example, Ethereum. Um, the Ethereum network mines one block, and then it gets propagated to the network. So it's just like one block after the other. With Phantom, you can have the network process, say, three or four blocks simultaneously to, get to, to come to consensus. And what is the beauty about Phantom is that we, we've managed to design algorithms such that you can achieve the final ordering of transactions across all nodes, right? So the entire node history is consistent across all nodes in the network. And it's really complicated how like, that process actually works, but we've been able to achieve it, which means that you know, intuitively, if you can process three or four blocks at the same time, it's always going to be faster than just processing one block at the same time, right? So that's the key difference. So what we tried to do is optimize you know, a consensus engine, and what my talk will be on about tomorrow is how we're also optimizing not just the consensus or the messaging between the nodes in terms of confer confirming transactions, but also about how you optimize the ex actual execution of the smart contracts or the applications themselves. So it's things like what we call like virtual machine or you know, database work, et cetera, that are not necessar necessarily to do with consensus, but still are really part of um, the entire transaction execution process, which is not just um, <coughs> are confirming a transaction, <laughs> but it's also like how does a transaction actually gets executed on the node, how does it propagate to the nodes, and how does it actually be finalized into the network itself? Amazing answer, amazing answer. You can clap, it's fine. <laughs> All right, so Phantom's kind of taking uh, a bit of a, what I would call a novel or maybe a different approach to adoption, whereas a lot of chains are taking like a flash in the pan, we're gonna chuck a bunch of incentives at the wall, we're gonna bring people over, right? You're taking a more sustainable, long-term approach by attracting developers, by giving them the tooling that's needed to deploy their DAP in a way that makes sense, not just from a technological standpoint, but also from a financial standpoint. Can you guys expand upon that just a little bit? Sure, I'll take this one. So uh, for, for those of you who follow Phantom's announcements, you may have seen Andre Cronier's recent blog post or article, he's a director and co-founder of Phantom, talking about Phantom's 30-year runway. Uh, we're, in, you know, we're, we're in, a, in a good position to, to have that behind us. Now the question is, how can we utilize that uh, in such a way where it gets us to, to the end goal? And the end goal is really creating these decentralized and mutable systems uh, that are censorship resistant for, for anybody to continue operating and launching and deploying their smart contracts on Phantom. Regardless of, as Andre said, uh, regardless of if we are dead, those of us here on the stage. And so what I mean by that is uh, it, it is quite different in the sense that we're, we're thinking about sustainability, we're thinking about long-term solutions rather than how can we pour the majority of the incentives into the ecosystem up front and essentially you know, have, those, have those gamified, gamed away. And as we've seen with, with a lot of other experiments and, and applications of the sort, 
liquidity mining uh, is a game that, uh, you know, is, is a game of musical chairs and it, it has few winners and many losers. That's not what we want. So we're taking a, a different approach where we're combining a variety of different incentive mechanisms. I'll, I'll go through them right now. So uh, one of them is, yes, we do have the traditional route of connecting any developer or entrepreneur building on Phantom with our uh, network of VC partners for the more traditional sort of fa uh, funding route where they would be investing directly into these ecosystem projects. But then we also have things like uh, Gitcoin grants. So we are the, the first layer one outside of Ethereum to have had uh, the Gitcoin grant pilot program rolled out, which we're in the, in the process of uh, concluding now. And essentially the way that works is through something called quadratic funding, where it disproportionately weighs the amount of votes or funding received um, for a project in comparison to just the total amount. And what I mean by that is if you have a project that has, for example, 10 very active users and they each donate a dollar, contribute to it, this could be a public goods type program, right? Um, they're going to get uh, a larger uh, matching portion of, our, of the funding that Phantom's putting forward than a project that just gets one $10 donation from one individual donor. Uh, and this allows us to sort of uh, democratize the, really alloc the resource allocation process in terms of what we have in our treasury. But it also allows us to harness the collective consciousness of the many who are actually using the applications in the day to day. Uh, it allows the end user to have a say in the direction of the protocol's evolution without our direct involvement. Um, so this is one of the initiatives we're taking and it's been a great success so far. We're in the process of wrapping that up in, um, rolling out those distributions. Gitcoin has been a great partner in doing so. But then we also have other things in, in play as well. So one of them is the ecosystem vault. What the ecosystem vault does is it essentially takes a percentage of all the network fees that are generated by Phantom. So this is real revenue generated by the network. Uh, these are not inflationary, uh, you know, infl inflationary awards that are being handed out. And this ecosystem vault is governed uh, through uh, phantom stakers so you can submit a proposal for what you want the amount you need to get what you need done and if you have a five percent uh five fifty five percent quorum and fifty five percent uh approval rate then you are going to receive funding for your project and uh our involvement in it as the foundation is uh minimal to the extent that yes we're going to be there to be to, you know pull the plug or turn it off if something goes wrong or if somebody's trying to game the system but over time, our goal is to remove ourselves from the resource allocation process as much as possible so that we can allow the market to dictate where resources should be allocated more efficiently. And at the end of the day, all resources are scarce resources, and we need to be able to leverage, again, this collective consciousness that I keep referring to, to be able to do that more effectively than those of us up here on a stage trying to come to a conclusion as to which project is going to make it and which one isn't. Well, you know, voting with your feet and allowing the users of the network who actually leverage these products to, um, for their day-to-day -day or for whatever, whatever other use cases they have is much more effective. So that's the ecosystem vault. Uh, last I checked this morning, you know, it just opened up, but it's already accrued around um, 80,000 phantom tokens, which is approximately $35,000, and we hope to uh, uh, continue seeing that grow. Uh, and last but not least, we've rolled out something called gas monetization. It's similar to what you may have seen in uh, affiliate rewards for marketers. You know, if you have views or clicks and you're getting these uh, kickbacks as an influencer or a content creator, whatever it is, we're doing something similar but for the blockchain, where the amount of transactions that are generated by smart contracts uh, under a certain DAP or, or developer team are, are now monetized. So, 15% of all the, the gas transactions your application generates for the network go directly back to your team to reinvest as you see fit to, to move your project forward. And so this is going to give teams the autonomy to really operate and find that balance of how can we really monetize this to the, the best extent while still keeping the user experience intact. And people are often confused and they say, well, wouldn't this lead to people just kind of trying to increase the number of transactions or up the gas or whatever it may be? Well, hey, look, at the end of the day, it's a competitive market. And if that's what you choose to do, then people are going to go to an application that's more efficient and offers a better user experience. And so it's, in a sense, it's self, it's, it regulates itself. It, it balances itself out. And so this is all, you know, kind of in, in wrapping it up, what we are trying to do here is remove ourselves as mediators and decision makers and allow the market to make the decisions as to how these scarce resources which we now have in our treasury and which are generated by the network are distributed across the different uh, dApps and builders on Phantom. So that's what I got. You should all be screaming and clapping right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, wanna, I wanna pick on something real quick, so, and maybe this is a question for Mike or Simone. 
Andre released an article, uh, Financial Peak into Phantom, talking about this long 30-year runway that you guys have. And I'll tell you one side effect of that for me when I read it, is I said, okay, we need to step back and, and try and start picturing what does this actually look like a decade from now? Like, can we, can we expand out the runway? Because, you know, when the bull market hits, it's just, it's just go, 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 right? So can you, can you give me just two, three minutes on what that is, what's the, the real long-term vision, and, and how important was it to secure that future and to kind of get people on board with understanding that? Because it's a, a level of transparency maybe we don't see a lot of. Yeah, maybe that's a question more for, uh, for Mike rather than... Yeah. Yeah, sure, I'm happy to take that question and maybe like Simone and Johan can also like comment on it. But um, so the article that you're referring to is an article that um, Andre Cronje, who's a, a director of Phantom now and uh, one of the original co-founders, um, <laughs> released in November 2020, um, 2022. So November, just a few months ago. <laughs> and in that article, he said that Phantom has basically a 30 year runway. And that's with the assumption of, you know, all, all crypto prices, everything stays the same as it is, as well as like our expenses. But in reality, it's actually better news than that because obviously the money that we have at the foundation, which we've accumulated over the past few years, isn't just sitting there doing nothing, right? Like it's actually earning an income. So we're actually like like relatively like like cash neutral or even like slightly cash flow positive, even 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 with the current market conditions that exist. And so for us, what we want to do is we're basically building you know, for the bull. We're, we're building for, you know, the next massive leg of growth. And what does it entail? Well, it, it entails like sound financial management and it entails spending a lot of time and effort and resources on the underlying technology. So as I mentioned before, working on improving, you know, consensus, working on improving the smart contract engine, basically working on reducing storage and improving transaction throughput. Because if we have the base technology extremely solid, it means that when there's the next flow of developers that come into the network and want to launch applications, that they can choose Phantom and they can say, well, Phantom is secure because they're not taking any shortcuts or anything like that. And they've you know, published papers, we can see the results, open source, and that the, 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 the technology claims that they're making are legitimate and they will benefit our application because, you know, we can, the network can handle far more users than say other networks out there or far more users than it can currently uh, handle. So in 10 years time, we wanna have far more transactions, daily transactions used on the network because in the end, what really matters is to, in order to create a sustainable network, it's all about fee generation on the network, right? So that means that what you wanna achieve is low transaction fees for each individual transaction or each individual user, but in aggregate, it's enormous transaction fees every single day to the validators of the network that, that um, provide the security for the network. So it's kind of like a similar business model, so to speak, say with Visa and MasterCard, where they're basically getting a cut of the transaction fee, but they're the ones that are processing all the transactions and making sure it's secure, making sure you can do payments, making sure that all the banks are happy. With Phantom, it's sort of equivalent in the sense that we, you want to reward the validators for securing the network, and that requires you to have a network that's scalable enough to be able to handle um, sufficient demand. And it's sort of like the transactions that you're processing, though, are not just payment transactions, but they're transactions related to all sorts of different activities that people use blockchains for, all sorts of different use cases. So you think about supply chain management, you think about DeFi, you think about NFTs, et cetera. All those use cases, we want to maximize the transaction throughput for. And so that is really the long-term goal of Phantom, and that's what all the work is all about. Hell yeah. Awesome. And that becomes even more impressive when you understand that that Mike and Andre pretty much bootstrapped this from the beginning. So it's, it's you know, there's a long history there. Go learn it. All right, so let's... Well, well just to be clear, like, it, it wasn't just us. It was, like, a team that we built around us, you know, the team that we've got on stage here. So a lot of people contributed along the way. Beautiful. Uh, so, all right, maybe this one's for you, Simona. I'll kick this over. So uh, how is Phantom solving the scaling problem while still maintaining security? I think we touched on that, but I am interested to know, how does this play into your BD strategy moving forward. Yes, that's, uh, that's <laughs> half for me and half for Mike. So, <laughs> but, um, okay, I'll start. First thing, actually, I wanted to add something related to the 30-year the runway that uh, the sorts of also uh, linked to this. Mm, so we've seen a very, an extremely positive response from, from everyone um, because we, you know, we disclose, of course, this, this information that generally is not so transparent uh, in the space. And, um, and, of course, it increased the level of trust 
that people have in the, in the foundation, meaning that um, we don't have to, I don't know, uh, create shortcuts or running schemes or anything like that to make sure to, I don't know, to acquire, for example, users in a very short uh, amount of time because otherwise, you know, we might run out of funds or, or something like that. So, of course, having such a long runway, as Michael was saying, it really gives us the, the freedom and really the, uh, the calmness to build the infrastructure that then developers and end users will use. Uh, and is honestly really the, the, best, uh, the best way possible of building uh, something in blockchain and not in general, you know, from a business perspective point of view. Now, um, going back to, to the BD strategy and how, uh, the, the, you know, Phantom in general and what we're building at Phantom uh, connects to that. Well, of course, um, what both uh, Juan and, and Michael outlined, so these uh, sort of um, key features and key differentiators that uh, Phantom have compared to, uh, to competitors, for example, are extremely um, interesting, I would say, for, uh, for builders and end us and users alike. Uh, when it comes to, to business development, of course, um, you as a, you know, a DAP or a developer team or a single developer as well, uh, knows already that uh, at the infrastructure level, they get, uh, of course, on, on, one, uh, on one side, the, the security, so that we didn't talk about much, but of course, we have two tools that offer best layer security. So one is Watchdog and the other one is Contract Library. These are tools that I'm gonna make it very simple for non-technical people, but basically uh, they scan smart contracts and they look for uh, potential you know, mistakes or, or issues or anything like that. And, um, and out automatically, of course, and um, so that the developers can, ben can be then notified and can then correct uh, and address the issues. Um, and then, of course, I would say the, probably the key uh, component is actually the single layer, a si single uh, or single chain uh, that Phantom uses compared to, you know, as you were saying, either side chains, subnets, or, uh, you know, or, or all these uh, scaling solutions. Um, because when you have one single chain, of course, you don't have to worry about you know, sacrificing security, but at the same time, you don't have to worry about uh, sacrificing performance and even more so at the end, uh, user experience. Because uh, we all know that once you start fragmenting liquidity, fragmenting users across multiple chains, across multiple subnets, multiple side chains, then of course you introduce an element of friction that is not ideal either for the builders or for the end users alike. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something that uh, resonates, I would say, uh, from a business development point of view. Uh, the simplicity uh, of the system um, that really is built in a way that it's stripped down of all the unnecessary stuff, right? Granted that, of course, we can pull it off and we are pulling it off from a technology point of view. So can we really do this on a single chain without you know, as we said, you know, um, let's say tap into alternative uh, horizontal scalability uh, solution. Yes, we can. And then, of course, this gives us also an advantage of also maybe later on adding additional scalability uh, solutions, such as maybe, uh, you know, sharding, for example. You know, Michael can, can talk more about this. But, um, but, yeah, I would say just to sum it up again, the, the single chain uh, that is focused on user experience at, uh, at a high level. So user experience for everyone, user experience for the developers. So it's easy, the developers know, okay, I have these tools, uh, I have the base layer security, I don't have to worry about you know, running validators, I don't have to worry about bridges between main chain and sub chains or whatever it is. I also have this uh, additional uh, sort of tools uh, that, that allow me to monetize my DAP or have funding and grant funding for the long term that is completely independent uh, and can be run and, um, and coordinated 
by the community itself, I think it's definitely uh, something that Phantom has uh, as a you know incredible advantage, and uh, it's it, from the inside, it's it's really uh, wonderful to see this happening and unfolding uh, above our eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You can clap. It's all right. Hey, a quick poll. If you've ever used Phantom DeFi or used the Phantom Network, put your hand up real quick. That's a lot of people in this room. All right. So this next question is for you. Uh, tell me about your go-to-market strategy. When you, which is when marketing, by the way. Uh, so <laughs> when, when the product is ready, right? There's an if you build it, they will come type of attitude, but I know that that's not the go-to-market strategy that you guys are going to be taking. Can you touch on that? Because I know it's a question that people get asked a lot. Right now, we're, we're kind of homegrown. We're this little niche community where we just love Phantom. But how are we going to get it out to the world? Yeah, I'll start. So uh, I think the first thing to think about is just mental models for what does is, what is mainstream adoption look like? I think a lot of people in, the, in the, this last cycle saw it as you know, a traditional Fortune 500 brand retrofitting their technology to somehow use Web3 because that sounded cool, when in reality it, it offered no advantages to, to the brands or to their users. I think we can take a step further and start to think about, well, what if mainstream adoption doesn't come from the incumbents retrofitting their existing infrastructure to Web3, but what if it instead looks like completely new business models that are native and that make it easy for users to onboard through things like account abstraction, where you can forget all these difficulties around things like remembering your private key and having a seed phrase and things that to crypto natives seem so simple and so easy, but for the majority of the population aren't. Um, so that being said, you know, we, we are still looking at, at, at these more traditional brand partnerships because they do raise brand awareness, but we're ultimately thinking about, okay, what's, what's the long game here? Is it just having a big explosive flash in the pan partnership that gets everyone talking about it for three days on Twitter? Is that really worth, you know, taking a good chunk of the treasury out to, 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 to do? Prob probably not. So what we're looking at is, is the ability to scale in terms of how we acquire our developers who will then acquire their users. And what I mean by that is when you look at the amount of applications that can be built on blockchain rails, they're endless. Right now we've seen the tip of the iceberg. Uh, with things like a, a account abstraction, it's going to become more simple to integrate everyday real world solutions for people to use without having to learn about the world of crypto and Web3 and blockchain. And what we're looking at is a way to really open up Phantom to the entirety of the long tail, a market that consists of niches of niches of niches, each one with its top hits and its own long tail, and allow those developers to seamlessly and easily integrate into Phantom, leveraging all of the tools that we offer, from funding solutions to automated smart contract security auditing systems um, to the resources of, of the community and the foundation itself. So it's two-pronged, right? Yeah, we're probably not going to, you know, uh, unless I'm wrong, Michael, we're probably not going to sponsor any basketball arena anytime soon. I don't think that's been a, a, a great success story for anyone. There's one that's open. Yeah, <laughs> there is. There is. Announcement for you. Yeah. Just kidding. Yeah, so breaking announcement. No, we're not going to be doing that. But uh, what we will be doing is is providing the infrastructure for, for the, the, the long game to onboard every developer, whether that's an application that serves you know, eventually one million daily active users, or whether that's an application that serves a very specific subset of the long tail that has highly engaged, high LTV users, but maybe they're only serving 50 people who need that application. That is the beauty of the composability of blockchain technology, that you can build any sort of application on top of the shoulders of giants that have already come before you to serve a specific niche of an audience that you know better than anybody else. And we are building the tools to empower those developers to go out there, find their market, and build the best product for them without having to have an enterprise level engineering team behind them or having to go raise money from VCs because you know it's not that there's anything wrong with that. That's the perfect solution for a lot of projects. But for other projects, if you're gonna open a bakery, you don't need to go to VC. There's other funding mechanisms and there's other ways to get off the ground. And eventually, you know, what we're saying here is just like eBay and just like Amazon capitalized on, on the long tail and capturing that entire market, we're opening up our marketplace to developers to come in and do the same. And again, like I said, we are removing ourselves from being the decision makers and the mediators and the ones who are deciding this is valuable, this is not valuable, and we're opening it up to the market and to users to decide what is worth investing in and what is not.
and that is our go-to-market strategy. Home run, man. Home run. So, real quick, because I know we're, we're running a little bit low on time here. What, one very hot, bleh, high ROI marketing strategy that I've seen other networks pull off really, really well are in-person events, hackathons, uh, things to get people excited about building on-chain. Is that something that we can, we can expect to see maybe more of in the future from Phantom? Yeah, for sure. So uh, actually, I would say this year, 2023, we are definitely um, you know, increasing the number of in-person events and hackathons as well. We actually just, just did one uh, recently with Morales. Uh, and we're looking into do more, of course. Um, again, now we, uh, we have everything in place from a technology point of view that actually it's quite fun and easy to build on Phantom. Uh, that's for, from, for the developer's uh, point of view. For um, everyone else, developers included, it's you know, the, the, the series of Phantom Vibe events that we, we started doing uh, late last year, and we keep doing, uh, we'll keep doing them this year. Uh, again, to bring people together, because it's always nice to, to meet people in person, to put uh, you know, a face to a name on Telegram or a face to a, uh, to a PFP. Um, so yeah, absolutely. We're, we're definitely increasing that, and um, we're seeing that people are loving it. So why not? Wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're out of time. Buster's over there shooting me dirty looks. So uh, Simone Pomposi, Mike Kong, Juan Angel from the Phantom Foundation. Thanks for coming out. Oh!